statements in there. He didn't have his body camera on the, the entire time, even though the report said he did. He didn't have his dash camera on, even though he was supposed to have his dash camera on. We take away the false statements in this case. There is no case. Let's see. We have two causes. We've got 35749, Diana, Lara, Santos, Staben, Martinez. And uh, 35751, Gendy, Gomez, Rondon. You said you had some pretrial motions, Mr. Muhammad. Yes, Your Honor. The first Are you one present. Yes, I believe that they're both still present. They were present earlier, and I believe they're still uh, present. Okay. Um. The first, the first issue. Presente. The, Presente. Okay. Uh, the, the first issue, Your Honor, is is the one I just address one point in the discovery motion. One of the one of the issues, one of the key issues in this case is how these women ended up on this property, whether they were directed and specifically whether they were directed by members of the uh, Texas military military department or Texas National Guard to to enter onto the property. I've been attempting for several weeks to get the names of the the Texas military members that were present in any discovery that they have. We haven't received that. So it's possible at the conclusion of this hearing, we're going to need additional time so that the state can produce uh, the names of those people. And, you know, I can look through the list and work with the state to call the one or two members who are most relevant to this proceeding. So that's the first issue, Your Honor. So I don't know if the court wants to proceed with about that. I'm ready to proceed now. And yep. you announced you were. And so that's why we're here. That's fine, Your Honor. I'm ready to proceed. Your um, Honor, if, if I may. Sure. Um, first, I'd like to know what motion are we are we dealing with? Is this a motion for discovery or is this a motion for a Frank's hearing? Because if we are here for a motion for a Frank's hearing, uh, the defense has not established that they are in the need of a hearing, Your Honor. Uh, they have made allegations, but they have not proved that they are entitled to a Frank's hearing as of today. So we do have argument for that. And if uh -huh. it's a motion to dismiss, then we would ask that this motion be carried with trial because these are factual issues that should be resolved at trial. Uh, they, the defense is not entitled to an examining trial at a misdemeanor. Uh, I understand that. So that's that's our preliminary position before we even know what we're dealing with today. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let me see. Gosh, I hit the wrong buttons and I'm going to put you all on hold for a minute. And I'm just going to bring up the motions. Okay. I've read this motion. It's a conglomeration of several different things. And I understand your point, Mr. Garola. But you know, you've got it in this case and you got it in a bunch of others. And I think I'm just gonna get this thing settled as to what happened out there. So I'm gonna let you proceed, Mr. Mohammed. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the first witness we would call would be uh, Mr. Noel Borders and we would invoke the rule with respect to the remaining uh, officers. Uh, I believe hey, Mom that are present so I that it's on the record and they will be given instructions. I believe it's uh, Officer Gal Galvan and Sergeant Torres. Your Honor, I understand that the court is inclined or has already said that we want to move forward, but these, uh, the motion itself, it says that the military department were allegedly were um, instructing people to come into a property. I know what your argument is. You made it. I understand your position and I'm going to proceed. So for the record, I don't know how the owner of the property can attest to what the military department did or not, Your Honor. That's what I we're don't talking. know who the owner. That that's what the whole hearing is about. So we'll just take them one as a time uh, as a time as it comes. Okay. Yes, yes, Judge. <sighs> Give Thank me you. the names. Put them on the record. So Officer Galvan and Trooper Torres are the other two people that are present. 
Uh, let's see, Officer Galvan, I need you to turn on your camera if you can. I see you there. Ooh. And I need Officer Torres, Trooper Torres. Have I got that right? I see. Yes, oh, okay, I see Trooper Torres. And uh, we need Officer Galvan. Uh, I see you there. Is that Ricardo Galvan? Yes, Your Honor. Raise your right hand, each of you. Do you solemnly swear the evidence you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes, Judge. Yes, okay. Judge. Yeah, the rule's been invoked. Don't discuss your testimony with anybody, and we're going to have to call you in at the time when you're going to testify. I'm sure you understand the rule. And uh, who's your first witness? Uh, Noel Borders, Your Honor. All right. So the two officers, Rudy, you need to put them in the waiting room. And Ms. Borders? Present. I, 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 said no, I said Noel, but is it a man or one? I'm it's a man. It's Noel Borders. I'm the owner of the property. No. Okay. Mr. Borders, I'm looking for you. Is your camera on? Yeah, I'm trying to turn it on. It says, let's see here. Dent, now can you see me? Yeah, there you are. I got yeah, you. It wouldn't let me turn it on. Thank you. And Lord. now I can sp see how your name is spelled, and you're definitely <laughs> a guy. <laughs> okay. Yes, <ma> <laughs> so I, I need you to raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the evidence you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ask your first question. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Borders, I'll try to get you out of here as quickly as possible, sir. Um, you are a landowner in Texas, is that correct? Yes. And can you give us the name of, of your property there along the border? It doesn't have a specific name. Okay. Um, is it, uh, have you uh, referred to it as Noel Border Farms or Las Vegas Farms? It can be referred to as those names, yes. Okay. And both of those properties are your properties? Yes. Is it one proper, one big property or two separate properties or how does that work? One big property. Okay. Uh, I want to show you a document. Just a second, sir. Um, can we uh, enable screen sharing so I can show them an exhibit? Well, Mr. here's the thing. Have you showed this to council and had it pre-marked? I, it's not pre-marked, but it is an exhibit attached to the motion. Well, so it's, it's the way to offer something into evidence, I'm sure you are aware of the process. Yes, Your Honor. Then you need to follow it. Okay. Um, well, I, I'm not sure how the court proceeds on, on Zoom, but I'm prepared to uh, mark this as a, a defense exhibit one. Uh, right now, I'm only offering it so that what the Mr. Garolo needs to be able to view it without everybody else viewing it. He can make his objections once it's offered, and, and then I'll rule on the objections, but um, it won't be coming into evidence on screen share until you lay a predicate for it. I, I understand, Your Honor, but I, I, I need the witness to look at the document to it to so that I can lay the foundation so that it can be admitted. This and for the state, this is all right. Uh, the criminal trespass uh, statement that was signed by Mr. Borders or purportedly signed by Mr. Borders. Uh, turn on the screen share. All right, Mr. Borders, I'm showing you what's been marked as a uh, defense exhibit. Put defense exhibit A. Have you seen this document before? 
Yes. Okay. Um, can you tell us uh, when you saw this document? I don't remember. Okay. Um, and looking at this document, is this your signature at the bottom of this document? No. Okay. Is this your signature here, the one that says Noel Borders? I just said no. Okay. Did you sign this? Did you sign this document? No. Okay. Are you aware that the state submitted this document uh, stating that you provided it to the state? No. Okay. Did you meet with the state and uh, did you meet with the state on May 17th? I don't remember. I don't know May 17th of what year. Good question, sir. May 17th of 2024. No. Okay. And the state the state did not ask you to sign a criminal trash, trespass affidavit on May 17th, 2024. No. Uh, what about May 17th, 2023? They may have. Okay. Um, when you say they may have, are you saying you have no recollection or it didn't happen or you're just not sure? I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. And uh, on, did you speak to the state on May uh, 7th of this year regarding trespassers on your property? I don't recall, but it's very possible. Okay. But your, your representation is you did not sign this document. This document is not a document that you provided to the state. I did not sign this particular document, no. Okay. All right. Uh, no further questions for this witness, Your Honor. Mr. Garola? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Borders, good morning. My name is Luis Gurrola Villarreal. I'm an assistant county attorney here with Maverick County. Um, you mentioned this morning that you did not sign this document. Is that correct? That is correct. Are you the property owner for uh, what's called or can be identified as the Las Vegas Farm or Noel Borders Farms? Yes. As your uh, as an owner, what is your involvement on the operations for uh, Noel Borders Farms? I don't understand the question. So, um, how do you you are the owner for the Noel Borders Farms? Is that correct? That is correct. Do you, um, as part of the owner, do you supervise uh, the activities that happen in your farm? Is that correct? I have, I have a uh, person that supervises the activities that happen on that particular farm. Okay. Um, how often are you involved? How often do you visit your property here in Eagle Pass, Texas? I don't know. But whenever I want to. Okay. Now, let me thank you for that. Let me ask you this. Um, are you aware that the Department of Public Safety has been patrolling your property? As yes. of last year and this year? Yes. Okay. Um, do you, can you recall when did this start? I don't recall exactly. Sometime in 2024, though. Okay. Now, um, you, now, now you mentioned that you are aware that they're patrolling your property. For them to be patrolling there, you must have given them some authority to be able to enter your property, do they? I gave the person that's in charge of that property permission to give them permission to enter that property. That is correct. Okay. And what is the name of that person? Jimmy Hobbs. And what is uh, his, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, and what's his last name, Mr. Borders? Hobbs, uh, H-O-B-B-S. Okay. Now, uh, Jimmy Hobbs, what is his um, what is his role in the ranch or in your property? He's the manager of that property. Okay. As a manager of the property, um, what what are his responsibilities over the property? To do whatever is necessary to maintain the property and to. Uh, make sure the crops are growing right and make sure there's no illegal activity to the best of his ability. Okay. 
Um, is he also so by that by that token, would you say that he's also responsible for making sure that your property is safe? Your Honor, we would object to these line of questionings as beyond the scope of direct and, and, and irrelevant. Overruled. Can you can you answer the question, Mr. Borders? Absolutely. Okay. Now, um, one second, please. So, Mr. Hobbs, um, why why do you why is there a presence from the Department of Public Safety in your property, Mr. Borders? Objection, Foundation. Overruled. They're there to try to keep the illegal people from coming across and get and, and arrest the people that are coming illegally. Okay. Now, and, and why why would you ask them to come into your property? Uh, objection not stated by the witness. Overruled. I didn't say I asked them. Okay. Let me ask you this. Um, so, Mr. Hobbs, what is his uh, what is his position in, in your operation, Mr. Borders? Asked and answered. Okay. Objection. Uh, Asked and answered, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Mr. Mr. Borders, isn't it true that Mr. Hobbs has uh, supervisory duties in your property. Yes. And as such, he can act on your behalf, correct? Yes. Does he have the authority to make sure your property is safe? Yes. Does he have the authority to conduct operations on your behalf? I don't know what kind of operations you're referring to. So does he, let me ask you, let me give you an example. Does he have the authority to make decisions as to the as to the activity that is conducted in your property. Yes, he has complete control to do whatever is necessary on that property. Okay, so would you say that he, so would you say that he had the authority to allow the Department of Public Safety to come into your property and uh, enforce a criminal trespass operation on your behalf? Yes. No further questions, Your Honor. Couple follow-up questions, Judge. Um, okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Borders, you said that, uh, just to clarify that uh, Jimmy, Hob Jimmy Hobbs has complete control over this property while you're gone, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, and if he said he did not uh, want the National Guard on your property, the National Guard shouldn't be on your property, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, no further questions, Your Honor. Anything else, Mr. Grola? No, Your Honor. Well, maybe may I be excused, Your Honor? Uh, may he be excused to be recalled? No, we we don't intend to recall him, Your Honor. Unless the state intends to recall him. No, Your Honor, he can be released. Then you're excused. Thank you for your time. Thank you. No, ma'am. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, we would like to call. Uh, um, Trooper Gomez, excuse me, Trooper Galvan. Ask your first question of the trooper. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see him on the screen. Uh, uh, Mr. Galvan, uh, uh, can you please state your name for the record? Uh, Ricardo Galvan, sir. Okay, and what's your job, sir? Uh, Texas Highway Patrol Trooper, sir. Okay, it, it looks like you're uh, not in your uniform today. Are you off of work today? Uh, no, sir. I work nights. Okay. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your duties as a, as a trooper? Uh, I patrol the highways. I'm a patrol the highway and uh, usually we work OLS and um, uh, working crashes and um, traffic control, depending on the situations. 
And how long have you been a trooper? Six months, sir. Six months. Are you a trooper level one? Uh, no, sir. What What's your level? A probationary trooper. What What and what is a What does that mean to be a probationary trooper? Uh, it's a year of probation. And after that probationary is over, you become your next to a trooper one. Okay. And do to, to become a probationary trooper, do you have to go through any type of uh, academy or training? Yes, sir. Uh, seven months training at the DPS headquarters. And you finished that training? Yes, sir. Uh, have you testified in in court before no sir okay so this is your first time uh, if for whatever reason you don't understand the question that i'm asking or it's unclear just please ask me to repeat it and i'll do that for you okay yes sir okay um now i want to talk to you a little bit about what you've done to prepare to testify today okay yes sir okay can you uh, uh tell us uh, what steps you've taken to, to to get ready for your testimony in court today? Yes, sir. I briefly read over my uh, synopsis and arrest detail. When you said you read over your synopsis, are you talking about the synopsis for written in a particular report, or what are you referring to? Yes, the report on um, on this case. Okay. Um. So. You say the report on this case. How many reports have you written in this case? Or I'll leave it at uh, that. No, sir. Uh, the process for the paperwork is that, depending on how our system works, is that we have to make a synopsis and then an arrest detail report. And when you say you make you make a synopsis, that means you write the, the a portion of your a report that would be the synopsis listed it, it, in the general offense report. No, sir. It's just a brief summary of what occurred that day. Okay. Where does where does that is that a a statement that's produced in a document that goes to the state? Um, uh, on our system unsure where it goes to, but it goes up to our system database. Okay, so you reviewed that. Did you have that in front of you? No, sir. Okay, is that something you can provide to me? Yes, sir. And what's the name of that database? Uh, Versiter. Versiter? Versiter. Okay, besides reading your synopsis on Versiter, what else did you do to prepare for the hearing today? Just that, sir. Okay. Did you talk to the prosecutor at all? No, sir. Did you talk to your supervisors? No, sir. Did you review your body cam? No, sir. Did you review your the gen, Did you generate a general offer? You were wearing a body cam in this case, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and you did you write a general offense report in this case? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you review that general offense report? Yes, sir. Okay. In, in preparation for this hearing? Yes, sir. So you've reviewed the synopsis and the general offense report. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, did you also write a probable cause statement for Ms. Gomez's case and for Mrs. Santi Esteban's case? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Did you review those as well? No, sir. Okay. Uh, did you write arrest reports in those cases? Yes, sir. Okay, did you review those as well? Yes, sir. Okay, so you reviewed the arrest report, the general offense report, and the synopsis? Yes, sir. Okay, just want to make sure. Okay, did you, uh, do you have any field notes? No, sir. Okay. All right. Okay, I am marking for uh, the purpose of showing the witness defense exhibit B, and this is a document that 
was produced by the state in this case. What's the purpose of I offer of uh, exhibiting it? Uh, Your Honor, I just want to show it to the witness um, to make sure that he can identify it. He is the person that signed this document. And share the if, screen. If, if, the, if the court wants, we can talk, you know, we can briefly talk to the state to see if we can stipulate to the admission of these. Share the screen. Okay. Um, Mr. Trooper Galvan, uh, have you seen this document? I'm showing you what's been marked as defense exhibit B. Have you seen this document before? Yes, sir. Okay. And is this a document that, that you created during the course of your employment? Did I create the course? What do you mean by create is this, the course? Excuse, is this a document that you, um, signed because you're a trooper as a result of the work that you were doing on this case? Yes, sir. Okay, is this your signature at the bottom of this page? Yes, sir. Okay, and and uh, at this time, Your Honor, we will move to introduce uh, Defense Exhibit B. No objection, Your Honor. Admitted. I'm going to show you another document, sir. It's almost the exact same document. That one was for Ms. Gomez Rondon. This one is for Ms. Santi Esteban. Okay. Are you familiar with this document, sir? Uh, for, yes. Excuse me, Your Honor. For the record, I'm showing uh, the I'm showing the witness what's been marked as Defense Exhibit C. We're looking at the same exhibit, Your Honor. Right. Well, these were produced in two different cases. I think one has ABTX 2024-11076. That was for Ms. Gomez. And this one is marked AB uh, number Texas 2024-11075. These are different documents. Um, you, you're familiar with this document as well, sir? Yes, sir. And this is a document you created as a result of your employment with the, with the uh, uh, Texas DPS? That I created or I used, or... you used, you used this. Not you didn't create the form. Thank you for the correction. Is this a document that you signed um, as a result of your work with uh, the Texas Department of Safety yes, sir. with this case? Yeah, we moved yes, to sir. this document as well, Your Honor. Any objections? No objections, Your Honor. Edit. Okay, thank you, Judge. So, as, as a preliminary matter, I noticed on both of these documents they're listed page five of nineteen. You see that at the bottom of this page, I'm showing you right now, uh, Exhibit C, and then if you go to Exhibit B, you'll see that this is also listed as page five of nineteen. Do you see that, sir? Mm. Here at the bottom here. I do not see it. Okay. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, if you look at the very bottom of the uh, document that's shown shown here, you can look at the cursor here. I think I'm having a, I'm not able to see it because of the toolbar on my laptop. Okay. Let's see if we shrink this a little bit. If I shrink that, can you see that now? Mm. Yes, sir. Okay. This is five of 19. This is on exhibit B, right? Yes, sir. And then we have the same issue five of 19 on exhibit C. Do you see that as well, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, do you know what's in, in the other uh, 18 pages of this document? Uh, yes. Okay. What What is it? They should be the other documents for the other individuals that were placed under arrest as well. Okay. So, you're saying that you think that there's going to be. So, well, uh, let's let's so, go ahead, sir. No, no, go ahead. So this is a document for Deanna Laura Santia Esteban, uh, article, uh, excuse me, exhibit C, right? Yes. Okay. And you think that 
the other 18 pages of this document will be documents for other people that she was arrested with? Yes, sir. Okay, are you sure or, or not no, sure? Yes, sir, uh, I'm not sure, I'm not. Um... Okay, you, you, can you repeat that for the record to make sure it's clear, sir? Yeah, I heard I it, move on, sure. counsel. Okay. Um, kind of questioning, this has nothing to do with the motion that defense counsel has filed today? Sustained. Has, I'll, I'll make it very clear shortly. Okay. All right, so, So with respect to these documents, sir, oops, I'm gonna stop my screen share there. With respect to exhibit B and exhibit C, you understand that one of your jobs was to gather the evidence that was relevant in this case and produce it to the state. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Objection on relevance. Okay. Never ruled. Um, when, if ever, has the state uh, reached out to you regarding additional evidence in this case after you produced this form? Objection, Your Honor. Relevance. Stained. Can I make a proffer, Your Honor? No. Move okay. on. So I want to talk to you a little bit about um, your job as a trooper. Um, you would agree that writing reports is is an essential an essential part of your job. Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, in the seven months of training that you received at the, the the academy, did they train you on report writing? Yes, sir. Okay, and there's also uh, a manual that has requirements that you're supposed to file when you write reports. Is that correct? Uh, I don't recall. You, you, you don't recall, okay? No, Would reviewing the manual help you to refresh your recollection? Objection, Your Honor. We don't see how these lines of questioning okay. have anything to Move do. On. I can I can ex sustain. explain, Your Honor. Okay. I have sustained the objection. Move okay. on. You, you understand, sir, that um, your report is supposed to provide a, an official record of the incident that you were investigating. Yes, sir. And it's supposed to be a practical mean of communicating facts to the prosecutor. Objection, in light yes. of um, form of question, Your Honor. Is that a question? Stained. Okay. Why is? Let me ask it to you this way: Why is a report? Why is writing reports an important skill for a DPS trooper? Um, because it, this explains the situation and the uh, and what occurred that day okay and if you don't remember something it'll help you refresh your recollection is that right yes sir okay uh can you tell us what type of information is supposed to be included in your investigative reports objection your honor relevance sustained let's get to the point okay So let me let me talk to you more specifically about uh, amendments to your report. You understand that if there's a mistake in your report, you have the right to amend it. Is that right? You explain meaning. Yeah. If, if when you write a report, if there's something you miss, you can go back in and fix it. Right. After it's submitted, or what do you mean by? Right. At any time, I'm asking you, I, I don't know, at any time. Uh, any time after you write a report, if you learn that some of the information you contained in there was, was incorrect or incomplete, you can amend it, right? Yes. Okay. And in this case, you amended your report at least one time to include additional information, right? Uh, depending, what do you mean, by like corrections? Or are you saying like, I changed it later on? Well, I'll ask you, I'll, I'll ask you open-ended. Did you add any information to this report, to your general offense report, after you originally created it? No, sir. Okay. So, 
So I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, May 7th of this year. Do you recall that date? Yes, sir. Okay. Were you working on Noel Border Farms on that date? Yes, sir. Okay. Had you, have you, how many times have you been to the, excuse me, let me rephrase the question. And you were working with respect to uh, uh, Operation Lone Star? Yes, sir. Okay. And how many times in April, between, excuse me, between April 1st and May 7th, have you been to, to Noel Border Farms? Uh, I don't recall, sir. Okay. Was it more than five? I don't recall. You, you have no, is it more than 10? Objection, Your Honor, asked and answered. Stayed. Okay. Um, do you do you have an independent re recollection of your arrest of Ms. Santi Esteban? Yes, sir. Okay. You have, and you have an independent recollection of, of Ms of the arrest of Ms. Gomez as well. Yes, sir. And do you understand when I say, do you have an independent recollection? Meaning I remember the day that it happened? Yeah, or... without without reviewing uh, other documents or without relying on your notes. That's, that's what I meant. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, when can you tell us uh, how you became aware that there was an incident on November 7th at Noel Border Farms? Excuse me, on May 7th on Noel Border Farms. Oh, incident meaning? Meaning that you had to go and be involved in some arrests. Uh, I learned off the radio, sir. Okay, and what happened? Uh, they advised that they had people in the property. Okay. And when you learned, when you uh, uh, heard that information over the radio, were you on a patrol car? Yes, sir. Okay. And that was a, that was that a, um, a patrol car that had a dash camera? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, was your dash camera activated? No, sir. Okay. Was your dash camera supposed to be activated pursuant to DPS regulations? Excuse me. Pursuant to Texas Highway Patrol regulations. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, and were you wearing a body camera? Yes, sir. Okay. Was your body camera supposed to be activated once you arrived to the scene? Yes, sir. Okay. Was your body camera activated for the entire time you were on the scene? Yes, sir. Okay. And were you on the scene for, for more than five minutes? I don't recall. Okay. A lot um, I was there for. Okay. Uh, would reviewing your body camera video refresh your recollection? Yes, sir. Okay. Give me just a second. Take a look at it. Do you recall when you submitted your body camera video to? Um, to I do not state? recall. Okay, was it last week or was it before last week? When I submitted my body cam, you said. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I I do not recall, sir, when I submitted. You don't recall whether it was last week or before last week. Objection, Your Honor. Asked and answered. Okay. I'm going to show you what's being marked as Defense Exhibit D. Your Honor, the state is going to object to the entering this into evidence or publishing before the court. Um, Again, this motion states that the military department had something to do with allegedly bringing people into the property. I don't see how Mr. Galvan can attest to that. May I respond, Your Honor? Yes. Your Honor, the, the, the motion has many different parts. The most I know, it's the most, most essential, The most essential part, Your Honor, is that the information contained in the probable cause affidavit is incorrect. 
all of these questions about the information contained in the probable cause affidavit. We'll get to the point. Okay. All right. I'm showing you what's been what's been marked as a defense exhibit D. Okay. Um, Mr. Galvan, can you see this? Your Honor, I'm going to object to foundation. This video is not properly authenticated. What? None of those questions have been laid already, Your Honor. I don't see how we can publish something that hasn't been. Well, he hasn't offered it. He's showing it to him for purposes of him identifying it. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, can you see this? I presume this? that's what he's doing. That's correct, Your Honor. Can you uh, see my screen, sir? This. Uh, yes, sir. Video? Okay. It says body. It says BWC two dash one one four one zero one. Is this your body camera? Yes, sir. Okay. And the play time is five minutes and 25 seconds. Do you see that here at the bottom? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, to the best of your knowledge, is this the body cam worn video? Is this the the video from the body cam that you were wearing on May 7th? Yes, sir. Okay. At this time, we'd introduce this. We'd offer this into evidence. Actually, yes. We're, we're still objecting, Your Honor. The proper uh, predicate has not been laid to enter a video, and it's already being played, so. Well, I don't know about it already being played, but uh, you haven't really laid the predicate. Well, well, let me ask Let me ask a couple more questions. The most important I, question. Sorry, Judge. I didn't go mean Go ahead. That. Just get to it. The most important question is, you see that the, the timestamp here says five minutes and 25 seconds? Here, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Does this refresh your recollection that your body cam was on for five minutes and 25 seconds? Okay, yes, sir. Okay. Now, before I previously asked you, um, was your body camera on the entire, during the entire incident? Do you recall that question? Yes, sir. Okay. Now that you've looked at the video, do you recall whether or not your body camera was on for the entire time that you were on the scene? Guessing. No, sir. No, sir. Your video was not on the well, entire time you were on the scene. Or no, this doesn't refresh your recollection. The question is what? You're asking if it was on the whole time or was uh, yes, sir. you're trying to ask? Was was your body camera on the entire time you were on the scene? No, sir. Okay. Was your body camera supposed to be on the entire time you were on the scene? Yes, yes sir. Your Honor. To ask another question. Move it along. Come on. I'll move it along. Okay. Now we want to ask you about your um about some statements that you included in your report. Okay. Do you have a copy of your report in front of you? No, sir. Okay. But you said that you had the chance to review the report prior to testifying here today, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, your report, you, you wrote in your report that your body camera was on and recorded the entire action. Isn't that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. But that was actually, now that we've seen the body camera video, you realize that's incorrect. Isn't that right? So the situation was that it's not it's not I'm not asking for an explanation, sir. It's just a yes or no question. You said you recorded uh, the entire video. We looked at we saw that it was only on for five minutes and twenty five seconds. You then said that it didn't record the entire interaction. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um in your report, you you wrote that when you uh encountered the women, they were wet and covered in sand right i don't know the exact words on my report but okay. if they're reading if you're reading that then yes would you like to review the report to refresh your recollection sir no sir okay 
Your Honor, so, we're going to object to this line of questioning. The questions are being the line of questioning right now relates to an offense report. This whole motion is based on a probable cause affidavit. So I don't see what's the relevance asking questions on this offense report for a motion that is asking questions about the uh, police, uh, the probable cause affidavit. I can respond, Your Honor, but I'd ask to do so outside the presence of the witness. No. No, I can't respond. Or no, no I can't respond you can to... respond, but I'm not excusing the witness. That's fine, Your Honor. I think what, what what I'm going to show, Judge, what I believe this we're going to show through the testament of this witness is that the information that he, he wrote in his report was, was incorrect and, and contradicts the information that he wrote in his probable cause statement, which is also incorrect. Well, isn't it necessary to introduce both of them and simply compare them? Ask him what's true. If you're saying one says one thing and one says another, can we get to the point? I'm, I'm trying to be as thorough as possible, Judge. You're not doing it. Okay. All right. Um, you also wrote in your report that the owner had provided you a statement or had provided the Texas Military Department a statement. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And in fact, you had not seen a statement uh, provided by the owner of that property at the time you wrote your report. Which, what statement are you referring to? The, the statement by a uh, Noel Border, sir. Do you have the, is there any way you can provide it so I can, I don't know which form you're. No problem, no problem. We can look at your at the uh, arrest report. Give me just a second. I'll pull it up for you. Well, we'll look at your, excuse me, we'll look at the general offense report. All right, I'm showing the witness what's been marked as Defense Exhibit E. Okay. I'm going to flip through this document, sir, just so you can look at it and make sure that you can identify it as the general office report in this case. Although, well, my computer is not showing anything. Just a second, let me fix this. All right. Can you see my screen, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I'm going to flip through this document and then I'm going to ask you if you recognize this document and how you recognize it. If I'm going too fast, let me know. Okay, sir. Okay, uh, Trooper Galvan, have you had the chance to 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 see this document as I flip through it? Yes, sir. Are you familiar with this document? Mm, yes, sir. How are you familiar with this document? Mm, meaning what? I mean, is this a document that you created? Is this a document somebody showed you? No, it's a document was created on our system. Okay, and did you, did you draft the information in this document? Did I draft? Meaning? Right? Did you write what's in here? Did I type each individual sentence and criteria? No, I'm asking that. I, I don't know. I mean, this is a, this is a, well, well, let's talk about it. This is a DPS, a general offense hard copy. 
Yes, sir. Okay. What is the what is the what Texas DPS general offense hard copy? It's so this is generated from our system, okay. our version term system. Okay. Is 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 this based on information you cre created or not? Or you don't know? System that information that I created? Yeah, that you input into the system. Yes, sir. And did you create this during the? Uh, Is there during, one particular uh, point here? Yeah, yeah, I was going to introduce. I'm trying to lay the foundation to introduce the document. You're not doing a very good job of this. You're circling around everything. If there's one thing that you already want to point out that you're claiming is not consistent, or you have your question, let's get to the point. Oh, okay. Well, I, I would move to admit this document, Your Honor. <sighs> Objections? No objection, Your Honor. Okay. It's admitted. Well, first thing I want to verify is there's a date here, May 20th, 2024. Is that the date that you created this document, or, or that's just the date that the document is presented, printed, if you know? Uh, I wouldn't be. I'm unsure, sir. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Now, in, in this is so this document has a narr narrative text, right? That's what yes, we're sir. looking at here on page ten. Is this is this the the case and it says case synopsis on the top? Is that right? Yes, sir. Is this this case synopsis that you that you wrote? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, as part of writing the report, one of the one of the key tasks that you're responsible for doing is including the facts that are relevant to probable cause is that right yes sir okay and when you wrote this report you and you intended to do that right yes sir okay um and when you wrote the synopsis you intended to do that as well right yes sir okay and what's the crime that miss gomez and miss martinez were allegedly arrested for criminal trespasser okay and in order to write out the probable cause statement, don't you need to have an understanding of what the elements of probable cause, what the elements of a criminal trespassing are, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And can you, do, as you sit here today, do you know what those elements are? Yeah, actually, Your Honor, relevance. Same. Okay. Uh, well, as, as when you when you wrote this synopsis. Did you refer to the elements of probable cause when you wrote it for criminal trespassing? The synopsis or the arrest detail is, I think, is it different? I don't know if it, you scroll down. I don't know if it's the same or the different one. Well, let's let's talk specifically about the synopsis. We're going to talk about the synopsis, yeah. the report, okay. and the probable cause statement. Okay. Okay. You said, if I recall correctly, I believe you said you write the synopsis first. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. When, when after the event do you write the synopsis? What after what event? Say again. Okay. After how how long after the arrest on May seventh did you write the synopsis? Was it the same day? Was it a different day? Uh, I don't recall, sir. Okay. Do you have a, a general practice that you're supposed to follow? Objection has uh, to answer, Your Honor. Send. Okay. Um, this says release date May 8th, 2024. Does that refresh your recollection? Mm, yes, sir. Okay. Does that mean that you wrote this document on May 8th? No. I'm, I'm unsure. It's probably when it was uploaded into the system. Okay. Do you write it in one system and then it's uploaded to another system? I'm not sure I understand. Yes, there's we have two different um, programs. Okay. And one program is, yeah, it's different. Okay. Um, now, let me ask, did you actually write the synopsis yourself or did you cut and paste the synopsis that was provided to you by someone else? No, sir. Which one was it? that I wrote the synopsis. Okay. 
And when you wrote this synopsis, were you referring to the elements of criminal trespass to make sure you included what you needed to include? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, you wrote here in your synopsis that uh, Sergeant Torres advised you that, that uh, excuse me, you wrote in your synopsis that uh, Sergeant Torres reported to you that there were a large group of individuals crossing on Noel Border Farms or on Noel Border Farms. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And that according to, uh, and, and you referred to a report that was created by a Sergeant Torres. Referred to Sergeant Torres. Yes. Yeah. You said re you referred to Sergeant Torres as supplemental report. Yes. Do that. Yes. Do you recall whether or not you had actually seen Sergeant Torres' supplemental report or that, or whether you anticipated receiving it when you wrote this synopsis? So, um, like our system is, I didn't see it. It's just how our system is based on is that they import it into the case. Okay, so yeah. you, so you, you said you didn't see Sergeant Torres' supplemental report? No, sir. Okay. Um, and you said that uh, you wrote here that um, Sergeant Torres had advised the people that if they didn't leave the property, they would be arrested. Yes, sir. Okay. And that the group of people crossed through the property of, on their own. Right? Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Okay. And did you get that information from Sergeant Torres's report? Uh, I got that too from who was on scene was um, Corporal uh, Gloria Diaz. So you got you didn't get the information from Sergeant Torres. You got it from Sergeant Gloria what? Gloria Diaz. Gloria Diaz. Okay. And are are those two facts, the fact that the people, or those two statements, the fact that the people remained on the property after they were advised to leave, and the fact that they crossed their own on the property, crossed the property on their own, are those facts that you included in order to satisfy the requirements necessary to state the probable cause for criminal trespassing? No, sir, it's the information that was given to me. Okay, so in this in this particular portion, you don't think that those facts are relevant to the elements of trespassing? That I don't think that they're relevant to the yeah, fact. Yes. Like what? What? Like them telling me that, or what are you meaning by? Right. You you wrote these. You included these two statements in here about them being on the property in a certain way, right? Okay. Okay, and I'm asking you, why did you include that information in here? Was it was it to address? any of the elements of probable cause, if you recall at this time? No, uh, no, sir. That's what I was advised. In this document, in this synopsis, did you try to record, and I know that you wrote a, a larger report, but in this synopsis, did you try to record the operative facts necessary to state probable cause? Yes, sir. Okay. As you look at this document, can you tell us which facts are necessary to state probable cause in this uh, for criminal trespassing? Objection, Your Honor. Uh, form of question. I didn't hear the court's ruling, Your Honor. Sustained. Okay. Move on. Let me try to ask the question a different one. Do you know what facts are relevant to probable cause that are in the statement that you, in the synopsis that you drafted, or you don't know? Haven't uh, I already sustained an objection on that as what he thinks is relevant? Okay. Uh, okay. I won't ask you what you think is relevant, sir. I'll ask you. As you look at this document now, today, can you tell us which statements are relevant to probable cause? And we've already launched an objection to that too, Your Honor. We have, you have, you okay. have, and I sustained it. Okay, I'll move on, Judge. The document speaks for itself. Just move on. Okay.
right. Okay, I'm showing you the probable cause statement that was uh, uh, entered for Ms. Gomez. Uh, can you see my my uh, my computer, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Have you seen this document before? Yes, sir. Are you familiar with this document? Yes, sir. How are you familiar with this document? How am I familiar with this document? Yes. Meaning, it's Meaning the, how is this a document that you know, that you've seen before? How do you know that? The PC affidavit. Okay. Is this your signature here on the document? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to show you the other pages. Is this the probable cause statement that you uh, drafted for Ms. Uh, Gomez Rondon? Yes. Okay. And you drafted a similarly uh, a similar probable cause statement for Ms. Santi Esteban. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And your signature here. You understand that you were signing under oath. Yes, sir. Okay. And you also signed the same one for uh, Ms. Uh, Santi Esteban. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, this statement here is a copy of the synopsis that we just reviewed. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, you understand that in the probable cause statement, you have to state the elements that are necessary to state the facts to satisfy the elements of criminal trespassing in order for the judge to sign this, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and in this in this probable cause statement, you wrote that Sergeant Torres advised you that uh, the individuals did not, that, that he told the individuals that they had to leave the property or be arrested, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and that the individuals started crossing through the property on their own. Yes, sir. Okay, and you refer to a report by Sergeant Torres. Yes, sir. Supplemental report, okay? But you actually hadn't seen that supplemental report. So he was on scene and he was gonna, he advised me he was gonna provide a supplement report of what happened. Okay, did you verify whether or not the information that you attributed to Sergeant Torres was actually contained in Sergeant Torres's report? Uh, no, sir. Okay. This, okay. Um, this, you also include here, it also states here that Noel Borders had provided DPS with a criminal trespass statement stating that people were not allowed to be on his property with permission. You wrote that, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you never talked to Mr. Noel Borders, correct? No, sir. And you didn't, did you get it? And, and you, at the time that you wrote this uh, probable cause statement, you hadn't seen a probable cause affidavit or a probable cause statement signed by Noel Borders. No, sir. Okay. And Okay. At this time, no further questions for this witness, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Gorilla. Yes. Um... Good morning. My name is Luis Gurrola Villarreal. I'm an assistant county attorney here in Maverick County. Have, have you and I met before uh, this hearing today? No, sir. Have we discussed anything that you have been asked about uh, during this hearing before today? No, sir. Okay. 
Um, Mr. Mohammed has shown you the affidavit that you executed in connection to this arrest. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And this is a sworn affidavit, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, you knew that when you signed this affidavit, affidavit that you were uh, swearing that the information was true and correct? Yes, sir. Would you ever put any fraudulent or false information on a probable cause affidavit? No, sir. Uh, during your preparation on uh, of this probable cause affidavit that you were shown today, uh, did you decide that you were going to write something that was less than the truth? No, sir. No further questions, Your Honor. May he be excused, or do you have something further? Uh, I have no further questions for him. All right. You are excused. Go get some rest. At this time, we call Sergeant Torres. Fine. Is Sergeant Torres here? I'm not seeing. Rudy, have you let him in? I don't see Sergeant Torres. I don't see anybody. Where is I don't see Rudy and I don't see Sergeant Torres. don't see him that he's lost anything. Who are you? I'm the OLS assistant for Rudy. Well, where'd he go? He stepped really quick. I don't see a Taurus. Is he in the way? You don't see a Taurus in the waiting room? No, I don't see him. I was looking into that. I don't know that I have, I don't have any. He's not in the waiting room. Why don't you go track down Rudy and find out where he is? Rudy? Rudy. Rudy, this is Judge Reed. Answer me. Rudy? No, he, he's not on the waiting list. You know what? In the future, you need to stay through my proceedings. If you have some emergency where you have to leave, you need to advise me of it and get permission. Do you understand? Yes, Judge. Now, what happened to Torres? Uh, he's not on the on the waiting list. He's not in well, the waiting room. Where did you put him? I swore him and told him to wait. I did not kick him out or anything, Judge. Who's the supervisor? We need to call somebody. How do we get hold of him? Where's the bailiff? Are you the bailiff? This fellow that sits up here all the time? Mr. Yes, Mr. J. Ibanez. Mr. Bailiff, I can't hear you. Go ahead, man. Find this witness. 
Chupu was it? Chupu, Chupu Torres? Yes. Chupu Torres. Okay, let me make some phone calls. I would suggest that. I'll be back in 15 minutes. Trooper Torres? Yes, Judge. You're under oath. We're going to have some questions for you for just a little while before we break. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Uh, good, good afternoon, uh, Sergeant Torres. Your yes, Honor, if I may, I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Mohammed. Your, Your Honor, if I may, uh, mm -hmm. based on the, I would like to have a word uh, on behalf of the state. Um, based on the declaration that Mr. Borders did today um, and the information that he gave us, I believe that it is uh, our duty as prosecutors to investigate what's happening on the complaint as he is the complaining witness. He stated he he did not remember he signed um, the criminal trespass affidavit. Actually, so, I think he was more specific. He said that wasn't his signature. Correct. So at this he time, he didn't explore whether he gave permission to anyone to do it for him. So um, I would like to ask for a continuance on this matter to investigate who signed this document and uh, provide that information that, that I have either to counsel and to the court at a later hearing. Um, and that would probably be a best resolution at this time to handle this matter, because I don't think, I don't see how we can continue discussing this matter if the complaint, the complaining victim said he did not sign a, an affidavit for a particular arrest. So at this time, the state would like to ask for a brief continuance on this matter and uh, so that we can conduct our investigation. And of course, anything, any information that we obtain, we'll pass it over to counsel and to the court at a later hearing. Your Honor, we would obviously object to that. I believe at the conclusion of this hearing, it's going to become clear that the information included in the probable cause affidavit is false and that the uh, the, the the criminal affidavit attributed to Mr. Noel Borders, which was notarized, is not a document that he signed. Well, um, what? All so right. without that, Your Honor, I think the case has to be dismissed, but obviously Your Honor decides. I do decide. And I'm going to uh, reset this for further hearing and for you to do your inquiry and whether you wish to proceed on something in the situation that we have. And so I'm going to reset this to next Monday at 9 a.m. Trooper, yes, you need Judge. to return here. And there's no way we're getting to it at 9 a.m. So I'm gonna have you return. We'll just, especially for instance, we'll call it that, set it, set it for 10.30. Okay. Yes, Judge. Yes, Judge. All couple, right. A couple questions, Your Honor. Um, we had asked that the the we were had, had intended to call a member of the Texas Military Department. If the state can produce that information to us shortly, I can get the subpoena on file. And if we need one more witness, we can call that that witness. And the other issue, Your Honor, is I would ask that my clients a present be excused uh, on uh, the first. No, your client must be here. Understood, Judge. With respect to the discovery requests, Mr. Grola? Yes. What was your... We're working on that, Mr. Mohammed. You all so, work it out. I'm leaving. Yes. Uh, I will see everybody back at one thirty. Not on this case, on a regular docket at one thirty, and I'll see the trooper and the balance of the people involved in this particular case at 10.30 next week. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Thank you Judge. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Pen, pen, pen. Just pen. Uh, three, five, seven, five, one. Gendy Gomez Rondon. And number seven on the docket this morning is three, five, seven, four, nine. Diana Lara San Santavan Martinez. And Mr. Taranzo, you're still under oath from the one I gave you this morning. And this yes, is a continuation of a hearing we started last week. Let me turn on the interpretation, Your Honor. 
Let's see. There we go. Fine. I have no idea, Mr. Hamid. Muhammad, are your clients here? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I see Miss. Uh, You're on mute. Down. Oops. You might need to change the channel, Mr. Mohammed. The the interpretation is on already. Can you hear me, Your Honor? Now I can. Thank you. I believe both women are present. Sure. That's fine. Sure. Mr. Garola? Yes, Your Honor. You uh -huh. had asked me for a recess last week so you could look into this. What's your position? So we've looked into the matter, Your Honor. And... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I, I know that we have some witnesses that are present here. I'd ask that they be uh, removed from the court. They will be at the time that we start hearing testimony. Tell me, Mr. Garola. So we've looked into the matter, Your Honor, and the state is ready to move forward with the cases as, as they are. Okay. Yes. Then who are the witnesses that are present? For us, Your Honor, it's only Sergeant Torres. Okay. And the state has two witnesses, Your Honor. We have uh, Mr. Jimmy Hobbs and Mr. Uh, Noel Borders. Your Honor, we would object to the state calling witnesses uh, last week, we requested, the defense requested at the beginning of the hearing, a continuance so that the state would produce the names of the Texas military members who were present so that we could call them as witnesses in this case. Um, we timely served discovery requests. I followed up with the state in writing multiple times. I followed up with a phone call. I believe I spoke to both Mr. Garola and Ms. Uh, regardless about this issue, and I flagged this issue for the court, and the court denied my request so that we could have the time to call more witnesses. Um, and that's despite us doing everything correctly. Here we have the state shooting from the hip. They said they were going to investigate this issue. They didn't have witnesses last week. Now they're being allowed. Now they're, they want to try to call new witnesses. Um, most certainly what's good for the goose is what's good for the gander. If we're denied the opportunity to have more witnesses come after we've done and, and prepared and, and served the subpoenas, the state should also be denied uh, the opportunity to have additional witnesses come. Can Last week share? was a day for the setting. The state, the state was aware of what the issues were. I laid them out in my emails. I laid them out in my phone call, and I laid them out in in the motion, and they didn't. So that's my that's my objection, Your Honor. Sure. Okay. It's overruled. Who's do you have another witness, Mr. Mohammed? Yes, yeah, Sergeant Torres, Your Honor. And we would again request a continuance so that the state can produce the names of the Texas military members who are present and that we would be allowed the opportunity to call them. Denied. Mr. Uh, Officer Torres or Deputy Torres, I'm not quite sure. Yes, Judge. There you go. You're still under oath. You were originally sworn in and placed under the rule. Yes, ma'am. Proceed. We would move to exclude any other witnesses that are currently present in the courtroom, Your Honor, first, first and foremost. And are they here? Are your witnesses here, Mr. Gorilla? Yes, Your Honor. They are in the gallery. I see Mr. Hobbs and iPad 10, no borders. Okay. So they can be placed on the waiting room. Gentlemen, Mr. Hobbs and Mr. Borders, we're going to place you into the waiting room and the coordinator will take care of calling you in. The um, state, the uh, somebody invoked the rule. So I'm going to have to place you under the rule, which means don't discuss your testimony with anyone uh until it's time for you to give it in court 
And in the meantime, as I said, you'll be placed in the waiting room. I don't know that Mr. Hobbs was given an oath. I think Mr. Borders has taken an oath already in the case. Wasn't he originally called by the defense? Correct. That's correct, Your Honor. That's correct, Your Honor. He was released from further testimony. Well, he's back. So, Mr. Borders, you're going to have to wait there. If some problem comes up or something, text Mr. Garcia on the chat. Okay? Same yes, for brother. Mr. Hobbs. Otherwise, I need you in the uh, waiting room so you can't hear the testimony of the other witnesses. Now, yeah. proceed. Thank you. Uh, Sergeant Torres, can you please state your name for the record? Raymond Borders. Okay, and what is your what is your job, sir? I'm a Tex Highway Patrol Sergeant. Okay. Before we get into your testimony today, I want to verify: uh, Have you spoken to anybody about your testimony since uh, last week? No, sir. Have you talked to anybody uh, from the state regarding this case since last week? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. Um, can you explain what your duties are as a sergeant? Um. Field direction control, uh, on-the-job supervision, ensure that the troopers have their uh, equipment properly functioning, uh, and then I do also field observations for their performance. You said ensure their equipment is properly functioning. Are you speaking about body cameras? Uh, cameras, uh, weapons, units. What did you do specifically with respect to body cameras to make sure they're functioning properly? Are we, are we, so I, I, I'm sorry, I'm, you're confusing me here, sir. So my, my duties as a highway patrol sergeant, I have a set of, of five troopers that I'm responsible for currently. My duties in reference to this case are different duties that when I'm in the field with it, with, in regards to this case. So are you asking me as a highway patrol sergeant in Carrizo Springs, or are you asking me in reference to the case that we're here for. I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry, I was a little bit confused by your answer, Sergeant. You said you have different responsibilities in the field versus different responsibilities that you normally have. I, I don't sure, I'm not sure I understood your, what you're saying. Yes, sir. Sorry. So you asked me my, my job duties, and it's a Texas yes. Highway Patrol Sergeant, and I'm stationed mm -hmm. in Cadiz Springs. I have five troopers that are assigned to me uh, that I am responsible for. In reference to the case that we're here for today, is a different duty and that's field direction and control in reference to the troopers uh, and the personnel that are working under me okay can you tell us a little bit more about your responsibilities and duties with respect to well first let me ask are you familiar with operation lone star yes sir okay and and the duties that you were just referring to are duties that you have with respect to operation lone star that's correct okay, can you explain us what those explain to us what those duties are that's going to be the uh, field direction and control of the assigned area, uh, overseeing the troopers, okay. ensuring that uh, their daily needs are met as far as, you know, sometimes some troopers have to leave the area. Uh, they have other things, their units go down. Uh, so I'll be there first as the first line supervisor in the field. Right. Um, and let me ask you a little bit more about what you've done to prepare for today. Can can you explain to the court um, what you did to prepare to testify, not just today, but today and, and last week when you originally called? Uh, I reviewed my video and I reviewed the uh, case report. Okay. Um, I see that you, it seems, it appears to me from where I'm sitting that you, you're looking down at something. Are you looking at a document? Are you reading something? No, sir. Um, I just have my piece of paper here. Okay. Okay. And that's a blank piece of paper? No, it's just a case number because I looked it up this morning again. It's the case number that uh, I wrote down to bring up the case report from the, it's, we have, so everything's online because this, the case number, I got it from the subpoena this morning. So, but I, I'm, okay. I'm looking um, down because I'm trying to hear from the speaker, sir. Okay, I'll try to I'll try to speak a little bit louder. Is that better? Yes, it's it's on a Not laptop. So much? I'm sorry. Okay. No, it, I'm I'm working on a laptop. It's okay. So I apologize. 
No, no, it's okay. If for whatever reason you can't hear what I'm saying, let me know and I'll try mm -hmm. to repeat it, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so you, you did receive a subpoena in this case, right? Correct. Yes, sir. Okay, the subpoena asked you to produce certain evidence. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I believe so. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, did you review the subpoena before uh, last week? Uh, when I received it via email, I read it. Yes, sir. Okay. And what steps did you take to ensure that you produced the material that was requested via the subpoena? So the, well, the case report, I, I downloaded it and uh, the video, I had to retrieve it from the watch card system. Okay. Uh, in addition to your report and the video, we asked that you produce um, any other memorandum, emails, text messages, or radio traffic recordings related to this, to, to both of these cases, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have any emails related to this case? No, sir. Okay. Do you have any text messages related no, to uh, the arrest? Well, let me finish my question. Do you oh, have any text sorry. messages related to the arrest on May 7th? No, sir. Okay. I've seen uh, on, on video sometimes that the officers are chatting in a, in a WhatsApp, what appears to be a WhatsApp text group. Is there a WhatsApp text group uh, that's active that you guys use during these OLS arrests? No, sir. Okay. Okay. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about report writing. How long have you been a, a, with a, a, the Texas Highway Patrol? Uh, about 12 years, sir. 12 years? And how long yes, have you been a sergeant? Uh, I just completed my year last uh, last June, June about June 22nd. Okay, nice. Um, and as as part of the training that you receive of, as an officer, did you receive training on report writing? Yes, sir. Okay. And there are obviously uh, THP standards on report writing. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you, it's safe to assume that you follow your training when you're writing reports? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And you follow the THP guidance on report writing as well. Yes, sir. Okay. Right, I'm going to show you a document that I'm going to mark, mark as. All right. Uh, Sergeant Torres, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, uh, this is what's been marked as a as a, a exhibit F. Uh, are you familiar with this document, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. How are you familiar with this document? This is the supplement that was provided. Okay. Uh, and who provided the supplement? I I inputted that, sir. Okay. So is this the document that you created? Yes. Okay. And is this in the same contain the same information that you wrote in the report? Uh, I believe so, yes, sir. Okay. At this time, we'd like to uh, move to introduce Exhibit F. No objections, Your Honor. And Madden. Okay. All right. So, THP uh, guidance in, in your training, well, let me ask you, when you, when you went to training on report writing, one of the things that you were trained on was the reports must include uh, statements relative to probable cause, right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And uh, you, that's also a requirement of the THP manual, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you and if you had statements relative to probable cause, you would have included it in your report. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. No further questions for this witness, Your Honor. Well, actually, I'm sorry. I do have one more question, or a couple more questions, sir. Were you, you were, you said you had the chance to review your body camera video. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, your body camera was not activated when you first arrived on the scene. It was activated sometime after you had been on the scene. Is that correct? Uh, I'm not sure. There was a video supplied 
uh, of me exiting the vehicle and responding to the scene. So I'm not sure which video you obtained. Okay, well, maybe I didn't obtain the right video. Thank you for yes, sir. pointing that out. Let me Give me just a second, I'll pull up the video and we can mm -hmm. look at the beginning of it together. See my screen, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm showing you what's been marked for um, demonstrative purposes as Defense Exhibit G. And this is from the Discovery website um, produced by the state. We're looking at a document which has prosecutor notes, Raymond Torres body camera. I'm going to start the video, but I'm not going to play it, sir. I just oppose, put the stop on it. Okay. Yes, sir. Is this, are you, now we're looking at this. We're looking at the screen that's been paused at second one. Yes, um, it says body worn camera or BWC 2 08 59370. You see that at the top, right. sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Is this your body? Is this your body cam video? Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. Is this, and, and we haven't, I haven't shown the video. This video is about 27 minutes and 40 seconds. Is that correct? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Uh, down at the bottom has a time lapse. Can you see that at the bottom here? Do you, do you need yeah. to, to, to Yes, sir. I see this? it. I see it. Okay. Okay. Now that you're looking at the video, is this the same video that you saw, or did the video that you reviewed this morning start at a different time and it's a different video? So it's the same body camera, but my my camera starts earlier than what this video shows here. Okay. So um based on your review of the of the video that you looked at earlier and just looking at this video today is it your representation that this is a truncated video or uh an edited video of the video that that you reviewed or this is a, a separate video so sir uh, if i can explain uh please so so this video, they're all the same from the watch card system. The thing is that when I reviewed and created the supplement for the arrest report, I noticed that this video was uh, starting late. So there was a delay in the recording, right? So what you can do in the watch card system is go back in time to when you arrive on scene. And, and that's, the re that's the video that I... Uh, had given to the liaisons to upload. Okay. So you gave them the complete video, but this is the video that they produced to me. Is that your representation? So that video is also in my file for WatchGuard. So he probably just grabbed the wrong video. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, you know, we asked to continue this here. We're going to ask that this video be produced. The key issue, one of the key issues in this case is what happened when the officers arrived on the scene. I've been harping on this issue with the state via email, via discovery request, via motion to compel, um, and and phone calls. And and now we're we're hearing that there's more evidence uh, about what happened at the very beginning of this at, at, when Mr. Torres arrived to the scene that the, the state hasn't produced. Um, so that's our our objection. That's our request. Denied. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I'm not going to release this witness. I don't have any further questions for now, but I want him to remain on standby. Uh, what we'll do is we, we'll place you, you can go about your business, but you need we need to be able to get in touch with you by phone. Yes, Judge. Unless, of course, he's, you're calling him back on a redirect today. Well, I don't know if Mr. Garola has questions That's for him. That's a but... question, not to you. Yes or no? Are you calling him oh, back on redirect? Yes, you. Uh, I don't know what he's going to testify to on cross, so possibly, Your Honor. Then we don't even need to deal with this at the moment. Mr. Garola, it's your Yeah, I have, no, I have no questions, Your Honor, for uh, Sergeant Torres. We just need to be able to reach you by phone, officer. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Thank you. 
Yes, thank you. Next witness. Well, we have no further witnesses at this time, Your Honor. Again, I will renew my request to continue so that I can call the members of the Texas Military Department once they've been identified. Mr. Garola. No, Your Honor. Um, yeah, we're going to object. Well, we're going to oppose any motion to continue at this time. We I'm like... not granting a continuance. I ruled on that. Are you calling okay. a witness? Yes, Your Honor. Um, can Take we just disable... down? Yeah. Uh, at this time, the state would like to call Mr. Uh, Noel Borders. All right. Uh, Rudy, uh, let him in. And do I put Mr. To uh, Officer Torres on the waiting room as well? Yeah. You want second? Let me just do it first. We would renew our objection to the calling of this witness, Your Honor. Several. And I will call Mr. Noel Borders, correct? Yes. He should be in now. Hi, right, Mr. Borders. You're still under oath. Uh, the state has some questions for you. No, okay. <clears throat> Borders, uh, good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Um, please uh, do me a favor and restate your name for the record. Noel Borders. Mr. Borders, uh, you were before this court last Monday. Is that correct? Yes. <clears throat> At that last hearing, yeah. um, defense counsel presented you with a document which they labeled Exhibit 1 which purported to have your signature. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, at that hearing last Monday, you stated you did not sign that document presented to you. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Borders, who, do you know who signed this document? Uh, uh, objection, yes. Your Honor. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, foundation. For no, another no. question. Answer the question, sir, if you do. Jimmy Hobbs. Now, Jimmy Hobbs is the same person who is your ranch manager. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Did you authorize Mr. Hobbs to sign this document on your behalf? Uh, obje yes. Objection, Objection, Your Honor. Again, this, he's not laid the proper foundation for these questions. Cover ruled. Yes, was my answer. Okay. Now... Did you authorize Mr. Hobbs to sign this document with your name? Yes. Um, I just want to, now let me ask you this question, Mr. Ho Mr. Uh, Borders. Does Mr. Hobbs have the authority to say who can come in to your property? Yes. Okay. As the ranch manager that he is, uh, does Mr. Hobbs have the authority to authorize DPS to arrest individuals who are not allowed to be in your property? Uh, objection, objection, Your Honor. All of these questions are leading. This is a direct examination. It's supposed uh, to be open into questions. Yes, uh, is the answer. Okay. Mr. Borders, uh, do you know the defendants in this matter? Uh, the first name is going to be Diana Laura. Santi Esteban Martinez and Wendy Gomez Rondon? No. Did you give these individuals consent to enter into your property on May 7th, 2024? Objection, Absolutely. Your Honor, relevance. Overruled. Absolutely not. Okay. Um, Mr. Borders, have you signed a new affidavit in connection to a new criminal trespass affidavit in connection to your property? Yes. Objection, okay. Your Honor, relevance. It's, it's completely irrelevant what he's done now. We have a, a, a document. Let me think about it for a minute. Objection sustained. You, your Honor, may I speak to that? <clears throat> I, I, would, I would object. There's no question pending, Your Honor. This is You need a, to. I can't just dialogue. give you. Uh, Mr. Borders, I just can't give you the right to do something like that. He's got to ask you a question, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Do you remember? Okay. That's all the questions I have at this time, Your Honor, from Mr. Borders. He can be excused from our, our part. Mr. Mr. Counsel? 
Thank you, Honor. Uh, Mr. Borders, you said that um, at some point you authorized Mr. Hobbs to sign on your behalf? Yes. Okay, this was after May 7th, is that correct? No. Do you recall the date? No. Okay. Um, what what year are we talking about? Uh, talking about 2024. It was before two, way before that. Okay. You're saying you gave him some authorization to specifically sign your name on a criminal trespass affidavit sometime before May 7th? Yes. Of 2000, excuse me, of 2024? Yes. Okay. No further questions for this witness, Your Honor. Now, can he go about his business? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. You're excused. Thank you for your time. Yes, ma'am. Your next witness? Uh, the state would like to call GB, GB Hobbs, Your Honor. All right. We would restate our objection about this witness, Your Honor. So we're ruled. Mr. Hobbs, we need to let him in. He should be on now, Judge. Mr. Hobbs? Let's see, I see a screen coming up. All right, Mr. Hobbs? Yes. I need to give you an oath. Do you solemnly swear the evidence you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God? I do. Okay. Yes. Yeah, thank you. You can put your hand down, Mr. Grohl. Mr. Hobbs, good afternoon. Um, my name is Luis Burrola. I'm an assistant county attorney here with Maverick County. Um, please do me a favor and state your name for the record. Jimmy Hobbs. Mr. Hobbs, uh, what do you do for a living? I'm a farm manager for Noble Borders. Okay. Um, how long have you been uh, working for? And when you say Noel Border, you mean the property itself? Or are you naming the owner? That's the owner. Okay. He owns this property, yes. And what is the name of the property that you work for? Well, we've got two sections of this farm. One of them's uh, Las Vegas and the other is uh, Lyman. Okay. Uh, were those properties together uh, considered to be the Noel Borders farms? Yes. Okay. How long have you been working there, Mr. Hobbs? 26 years. 26 years. As a farm manager, what are your duties? Well, prepare, get the land prepared and grow crops. Everything that's involved with that. Okay. What about any um, keeping the property safe? Is that one of your duties as well? Yes. Okay. Um, how often do you talk to Mr. Borders about what happens in your in the property? Well, not real often, but he's he doesn't live here, so yeah, okay. we talk. We talk. Excellent. Um, as a farm manager, uh, are you authorized to make decisions on what happens on the property? Yes. Okay. And uh, who conferred you that authority, sir? Mr. Borders. Okay. Uh, with that conferred authority that you have, are you authorized to give consent to someone to enter the property? Yes. Okay. Mr. Hobbs, I would like to present to you what's been marked as the defendant's exhibit one. This has been admitted to evidence previously, Your Honor. Uh, uh, I don't believe this document has been admitted to evidence because Mr. Borders could not authenticate it. I don't recall from last week. Pull it up and let me see it. Oh, I remember this document. We talked about it. 
Yes. We did, but it couldn't, it wasn't admitted because again, Mr. No, Mr. Border said that wasn't a signature at the bottom of the document. I see. Are you so offering it, Mr. Gorilla? I'm offering to publish it, Your Honor, because it was admitted at the last hearing as exhibit one. Well, either way, it's admitted. We would have. That's fine. Mr. Hobbs, ha have you seen this document that's been marked Defendant's Exhibit 1 before? Yes. Okay. Um, are you familiar with this document? Yes. Okay. Can you please tell us what, what is the title of this document up here? Criminal Trespass Affidavit. Okay. Can you tell me whose name appears on this document? No borders. Okay. Down here we see a signature. Uh, can you tell me what this signature reads? It says no borders, but uh, I signed it. Um, can can you repeat that? I, I believe there was some interference on my end, Mr. Hobbs. Are you asking me about the signature there? Yes, I'm asking, what does the signature read? It says no borders. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hobbs, do you know who signed this document? I did. Okay. Uh, and you signed this document under uh, Mr. Noel Borders' name. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Do you, re do you remember when you signed this document? Seemed like it was May last year sometime. Okay. All right. Um, did Mr. Borders give you the authority to sign this paper under his name? Objection yes. Foundation. I have a rule. Yes. Okay. Um, now let's talk about the reason why we're here today, uh, Mr. Hobbs. On May 7, 2024, some individuals were arrested in your property that you supervise. Uh, do you know the defendants, uh, Diana Laura, Santiesteban, Martinez, and Wendy Gomez Rondon? No. Okay. Uh, did you give them permission to enter this property? No. Did you give them consent to enter your property? No. Did uh, Mr. Borders at any point in time tell you that these individuals have consent to be in your property? No. No further questions, Your Honor. Counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Borders, I'm going to show you that exhibit again. It's uh, Defense Exhibit 1, which has now been admitted. All right. Uh, first thing, sir, can can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, now, this document says my name is Noel Borders. Is your name Noel Borders? No. Okay. It says I am the owner of the private property located at Las Vegas Farms, Camado, Texas. So you're not the owner of the private property located at Las Vegas Farms in Camado, Texas, are you? No. Okay. And then there's a signature down here that's uh, Noel's Noel Borders. You're not Noel Borders, right? No. Okay. And I see here that there was a, a officer. Looks like it says Rene Cordova. Um, was there an officer present when you signed this document? Yes. Okay. Did she ask to see your identification verifying that you're Noel Borders? I don't remember showing an ID, but I know him very well. Okay. Do you have an ID that suggests your name is Noel Borders? No. <laughs> okay. And the the date on that document was May 17th. Is that the date that you signed the document? I think so. Okay. No further questions for this witness, Your Honor. May he go about his business or do you have anything else? Nothing else from the state, Your Honor. Okay. You're excused, Mr. Hobbs. Thank you. Counsel, your next witness. 
uh, the state rests at this time, Your Honor. Mr. Muhammad, your next witness. Uh, Your Honor, we have no further witnesses at this time. Again, we will renew our request for uh, the opportunity to call members of the Texas Military Department and for the opportunity to review the the uh, full version of Mr. Torres's video, which we've requested multiple times. Denied. Okay, I'm uh, does the court want to hear argument? Well, if you give me a second to speak, I was Sorry, going to exactly say that. My apologies, Judge. Go ahead. Sure, but it's your motion, Mr. Manila. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, we're here because there was a, a PC affidavit, a probable cause affidavit resulting in the arrest of uh, the, the two clients I have here and, and many other people, which is based on uh, lies. Um, the, the probable cause affidavit was written by a trooper in training, uh, Mr. Galvan. He said that the PIS statement, the probable cause affidavit, was based on information in Sergeant Torres' report. But well, we learned that was the lie. It wasn't true. Um, when he came and testified, Galvan said that he, he didn't review the report before writing his probable cause statement and that he's never reviewed it, not even to this day. Um, the probable cause statement states that Sergeant Torres gave uh, Trooper Galvan information. That was a lie. Galvan stated uh, in his testimony that he actually got the information from another trooper. Um, the PC affidavit says that the clients were given the opportunity to return to Mexico by Sergeant Torres. But we know that's a lie because we have the probable cause. We have the statement drafted by Sergeant Torres. Now I'm going to pull it up here, Judge. Sergeant Torres testified today that he would have included any statements relative to probable cause in his report because that's the way that's what he's trying to do. He's been doing his job for 10 years. He's been a sergeant for a year. He knows what he's doing. There's nothing in this report at all, nothing at all that says that he gave the migrants the opportunity to return. So that statement that Galvan had in the probable cause statement in both of these cases was false. The, the, the Galvan also wrote uh, in the probable cause statement that these people, the immigrants, including my clients, started crossing the property on their own and made it seem as if Gal, uh, uh, Sergeant Torres witnessed that. Um, but again, we're looking at the, the report here. It doesn't say anything about that at all. Those are statements necessary for probable cause. It's not included here. Um, the report. Uh, also stated, excuse me, the probable cause statement also stated that no world borders had provided a statement on the complaint. Well, we know that's not true. Um, even assuming, you know, taking apart the, the falsity of the, the affidavit itself, the affidavit was signed on the 17th. This event occurred on May 7th. There was no testimony that prior to May 7th, uh, either uh, Hobbs or Borders or anybody else connected with this property had provided that information to the to, to law enforcement, and instead um, we learned from uh, Mr. Borders that the document that purported that he was reported to sign as the owner uh, of the document was not signed by him, uh, and and now the state has brought in a new witness, a new witness to try to 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 rehabilitate this, the document, and it's, it's not you can't rehabilitate it. Um, it was signed and witnessed by a police officer who uh, acted as a notary in that statement, uh, in the signing of that statement. And at a bare minimum, the notary is supposed to check the ID. Are you the person signing the document? Uh, that, that didn't happen. Um, and not only were the, the statements in the probable cause affidavit incorrect, but if the court would uh, allow me to proffer, there were many, there were various statements in his report reflecting that what Sergeant Galvan, excuse me, Trooper Galvan or Trooper in training Galvan was doing was, was incorrect. He had false statements in there. He didn't have his body camera on the, the entire time, even though the report said he did. He didn't have his dash camera on, even though he was supposed to have his dash camera on. He made statements uh, uh, in the report that contradicted statements in the um, probable cause statement. The general offense report, I believe, is Exhibit E. If we look at the general offense report, 
It says he got information from about uh, the clients entering the property from those of the, the Texas National Guard, but that's not what the um, probable cause statement states. Uh, the bottom line is Galvan was is an unreliable, untrustworthy witness. His affidavit is filled with false statements. Those false statements were used to uh, detain and uh, and proceed on this on these charges against my client. If we take away the false statements in this case, there is no case, right? The statements are um, that there's a complaining witness. There was no complaining witness on May 7th. If we take away the affidavit, the statement about them actually crossing the property on their own and refusing to leave, that's notice. There is, there are no other notice allegations. You take these out, you cannot state a claim for trespassing. These cases must be dismissed. And quite frankly, all of these Noel Border Farms cases prior to whenever Mr. Noel, but prior to whenever Mr. Noel, Mr. Border signed the, the, the new affidavit should be dismissed as, as improper and based on false and fraudulent information perpetuated on the court. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Gorilla. Yes, Your Honor. So here the defense has not met their burden. Uh, the defense has not established that the affiance, uh, Trooper Galvan and Sergeant Torres acted deliberately and falsely or with reckless disregard for the truth. That is the standard. Uh, the defense has not put any evidence to contest that Trooper Galvan and Torres lied on their PC affidavit. Uh, a single piece of evidence that they have is a declaration from the defendant, which is attached to the motion. Um, even if this court was to find that these arresting officers made a misstatement that resulted from negligence or inadvertence under Dancy v. State, and that's 728 Southwest 2nd 772, a misstatement resulting from negligence or inadvertence does not completely invalidate an affidavit. Um, Further, the defendant must not show only that the affidavit contains false statements, but the affiant, but he also has to prove that the affiant acted improperly regarding these statements. So there has to be some sort of intent here as well. And that's Hennessy versus State 660 Southwest 2nd, 87, 92. Um, Your Honor, here the relief is not should, should not is not and should not be dismissal. Uh, the relief available to the defense is a striking of the alleged false statements from the PC affidavit. Um, should the court decide to strike some of the statements on the probable cause affidavit, we can still find probable cause for these arrests. Um, lastly, uh, our position is that the information and complaint filed in this court is the charging document, which bests this court with jurisdiction and not just the probable cause affidavit. Um, today we heard from the landowner and the ranch manager who both didn't give consent to the defendant to come in into their property. Um, we would ask that this motion be, be denied, Your Honor, and uh, at this time the state rests. Thank you. May I respond, Your Honor? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, the first issue is, did they did Mr. Galvan include information, deliberately include false information? Yes. He knew when he wrote this, when he wrote the probable cause statement that, that he had not spoken to Sergeant Torres, that he had not looked at Sergeant Torres's report, but those were the statements that he included in the report. And that, and, and the facts that he attributed to Sergeant Torres based on not talking to Torres and not talking about the report are relevant to the elements of, of effective consent and, and notice. Their, their ability to be on the property um, and and, uh, and and additional to the, the complaining witness. Now, with respect to the charging document granting the court authority, even if the probable cause statement is invalid, the, the, the case law is clear on this. If the probable cause statement is invalid, you can't cure it with an information. And that makes sense, right? And, and and the citation for that is ex parte Arturo Garcia 547 Southwest 2nd 271 criminal Texas Criminal Appellate Court 1977. And and the reason why that makes sense is because you know if the 
if, if the police are arresting people based on false information and providing false and fraudulent information to the court, and then the prosecutor just writes, just drafts an information based on uh, statements made in the false probable cause statement, how can that possibly cure the problem? Most certainly it doesn't discourage bad behavior and most certainly it doesn't make uh, a, a lie now true. Um, so on that, on that, your honor, we would, we would, we would, uh, we, we, sorry, I would say one more thing. Although the state said that if you take out the statements, the um, probable cause would still be stated, it, he hasn't explained how that would be. If there's no complaining witness, there's no case. If there's a statement which says that they had noticed that they had to leave the property, but that wasn't true, then, and there's no other notice alleged, then that's, then you haven't stated the element, the, the notice element or the, the effective consent element. And, and that's what, what's at issue here. And on that, Your Honor, we would rest. You know, it strikes me that people have gotten to where they turn, they use the somebody is lying uh, so loosely anymore. Um, it's kind of a shame. I don't know that any of the witnesses I heard were deliberately trying to mislead anyone. They were articulating that these people did not have permission to be on that property from the owner, which is very clear. Uh, and um, I don't, uh, I just don't see any egregious actions on their part that would justify dismissal in this case. So uh, your motion on each case is denied. I'm sorry, just, just for factual clarification, is the court saying that um, because the conduct wasn't egregious, it's not being dismissed, or because the conduct I said was what I'm gonna an say, honest Mr. mistake? I'm just going to say what, I'm sa what I've said and articulated it the way I wanted to, and that's it. Okay. Yeah, I'm and sorry, we, we, would, are... we would object. I'm sorry, we would just object to the, to the court's ruling and to the the okay. factual basis or lack the factual basis for the for the ruling. That is fine. Okay, we are concluded on the hearing. And uh, I'm leaving the meeting. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, everybody. Texas is sending a message to any caravan and to any cartel member. We're ready. We're waiting for you. If you dare step into the state of Texas, Texas will use every tool and strategy we can to, to arrest anybody who's violating the law, to put behind the bars anybody who's violating the law, to make sure that the laws in the state of Texas are going to be enforced.